For this video, let's look at the capabilities and use of Mail Merge in Microsoft Word. We'll start by understanding exactly what Mail Merge is and its common uses. We'll look at the major steps of a Mail Merge, and also some special considerations when working with dates, numbers, or currency from a data source. The major uses for Mail Merge include creating personalized form letters, personalized email messages, the printing of addresses on envelopes, and the printing of information for labels. We're going to look at using a mail merge to create personalized form letters, but then we'll also use the same data source so we can print address information directly to the envelopes. If your printer's not capable of printing directly to envelopes, or you're using some other means of delivery, we'll show you how to print those addresses on labels, and then you can affix them to anything you wish. Here are the major steps when performing a mail merge. We begin by selecting the type of mail merge we wish to perform, like letters, email, envelopes, or labels. Second, we select the data source. This could be something like an Excel spreadsheet or a text file, or even like an access database or website. And this is where we're going to get the information that's going to populate each of the items selected in the first step. This could also be data coming from your Outlook contacts. And as an optional step, while we're performing the mail merge, we may also want to perform some sorting or filtering or targeted removals from certain items that came from the data source that you might not want to actually include in the mail merge operation. We begin our example with the acquisition of the data. Whenever I work with mail merge, my preferred source of information are Excel spreadsheets. Now you can use other data sources like text files or databases, but for me, this is usually where I have my information. So here we've got a file called mail merge data, and I have a table of information on a sheet called data sheet. So we can see we've got the first name, last name, address information, city, state, zip, etc. And then other things I might want to include in my form letter, like I might want to show the salesperson's sales for the last quarter, or I might want to show a particular date that something was sold. Here I've got their email addresses. There's other information in here, but some of this doesn't pertain to the mail merge. So now that we know where the data is coming from, let's now switch over to Word and start the actual mail merge operation. The whole idea of the mail merge is to save time. So we have a form letter here that we want to send out to all of our sales reps. And the majority of the form letter is the same for every person. There are only key areas that need to be different, and we want those to be personalized. So here, all the places where I have these blank lines, this is where information essentially needs to be plugged in on a sales rep by sales rep basis. To begin the mail merge, we're going to go up to the mailings ribbon, and in the upper left-hand corner, we have a group called Start Mail Merge. So this is essentially going to be steps one, two, and three discussed earlier. So step one, start the mail merge. This is where you pick the type of mail merge that you're going to create. Because I'm already in a letter, I don't actually have to pick one of these. But if I had a letter and I decided, oh, I'd rather that be an email message, I could switch this to the format of email message. Since email messages don't have page breaks or page width, all of those elements are removed from the document. If I wanted to start a mail merge for labels, I'd choose labels, and then I'd go in and tell it the kind of label that I'm going to use. So a very common label for envelopes would be an Avery label 5160. All of the major label manufacturers are listed here. So you might have to find your particular manufacturer and then go down and find the product number for the label that you purchased. Since I'm not actually doing labels, I'm gonna cancel this. The next step would be to select our recipients. Since our recipients are coming from an Excel spreadsheet, we'll select Use an Existing List. I'll browse out and find my spreadsheet. It lets me pick the particular sheet that I want to pull data from. Since this workbook only has one sheet in it, and that's data sheet, I'll go ahead and select that. Now we're on to step three, editing the recipient list. I like to enlarge this so that I can see more information. When we perform the actual mail merge operation, the letters will be produced in the order that the items in this list appear. So if you wish to have these letters come out, say in alphabetical order by last name, or in sorted order by state or zip code, we can come down here to the sort option, and we could do something like, let's sort by region, and then within each region, we'll sort by state. And then maybe within each state, we'll sort by last name. So this way, the mail merge produces the output in this order. If there are certain things in this list that you don't want, you can filter them out by going down to the filter option. And then we could do something like, if the region is not equal to Midwest. And then I filtered out all the Midwest records. I'm gonna hit okay. And now here's where we insert the actual spreadsheet information into our form letter. 
These blank lines represent where I'd like the name, address, city, state, zip information to go. Those were just temporary, so I'm going to delete them. Now, probably the easiest way to get the address information is to add what's called an address block. So for the address block, this will pull fields from the data source that it believes make up the name and address information. You've got options for how you format the person's name, and you can see a preview of that right here. You can also walk through the various records in the data source to see if there's any anomalies in the data where this selection might cause undesirable results. In my case, notice it's putting the region below the city-state zip information because it thinks that's the country. Now I could go over here and tell it not to include the country information, but if I did want to include the country information, but this is just being selected incorrectly, there is a match fields option down in the corner. And here you can make adjustments for the targeting process that the merge used when it tried to figure out your spreadsheet. So if it got anything wrong, you can fix it. So in this case for country or region, it saw the word region and assumed that would be the information you want in an address block, but we didn't want that. So if this really should have gone to some other kind of field like country, we could change it. In our case, we don't want it at all, so we're going to choose not matched. We'll hit OK, and I'll close out the insert address block. Instead of showing the actual spreadsheet information, it puts a field code here. And this is just to represent that data will be plugged into this location. If you want to see the actual data, we can go up to the mailings ribbon and choose preview results. So this will let us see what the data looks like when it actually gets pulled and populated into the letter. In my case, I'm not a fan of the extra spacing that's been added between these, so I'm going to make an adjustment by going up to Layout and removing the space after each line. Back to the Mailings ribbon. If you want to walk through the data source, and again checking for any anomalies in the data, we can use these controls up here in the Preview area to step through one record at a time. We could even go to the very last record, or all the way back to the very first record. This is a good way to make sure that things like your filterings and sortings are working properly. I'm going to turn the preview results off for the moment. So the region field from the data source, we actually wanted that to be positioned here. So I'm going to remove those temporary blank lines. And now instead of going up and choosing the address block, I'm going to go to insert merge field because this allows me to pick and choose exactly which fields I want in any order that I want. So I'm going to go pick region and that's going to plug in a region field code. I want to customize the greeting so it has the user's first name. So I'll delete my temporary lines and then go up to merge field and choose the first name field. So our letter says it's time for the quarterly sales contest. The grand prize is a trip for two to Cancun. Any regional rep who increases their sales figures by 25% is eligible. Your previous quarterly sales totaled, and this is where we want to go get the sales figure from the spreadsheet. So again, here's my little temporary placeholder line, and I'm going to go up to insert merge field and choose sales. So now I have a sales field code. Verify your email address is correct, and we want to show the user's email address field here, so that way they can tell if we have it on file correctly. So I'll go up to insert merge field and choose email address. Now seeing the letter in this sort of field coded state isn't very helpful, so I'm going to go back up to preview results. Using the controls to walk through the data source one record at a time, we can see how all of the inserted information is changing on a user by user basis. So if I were to go to the last record, I can walk backwards, I can walk forwards. Now when you're in this preview results mode, it may be difficult to locate exactly where the inserted fields are. One of the things that Word does is if you click on a location where a field exists, it will highlight that field. So I can see a field code for greeting, for the region, for the address block, over here for sales, for the email address. If you wish to know where all of the inserted fields are without having to click through the document, we can change that behavior by going up to File and then Options. In the Advanced section of Options, if we scroll down to the Document Content section, there's an option here for Field Shading. So instead of shading it only when it's selected, we could choose Always. Hit OK, and now the field codes are always shaded. Notice that the sales figure inserted from the Excel spreadsheet does not have any formatting. That's something we're going to address in a moment. Now here's a beginner's trap that almost everybody falls into when they're first learning mail merge. We get the letter all set up and we're ready to start printing, and so we do what we always do. We go to File, and then Print. The problem with this is if you print from the normal Windows print system, the only thing you're going to print is this one page for this one record. Mail Merge uses a different printing system. On the Mailings tab, in the upper right, we have to go to Finish and Merge and Print Documents from here, because this is what will iterate through each row of the Excel spreadsheet swapping out information from record to record. So when we choose Print Documents, we can choose to print all of the records 
only the record we're looking at, which would be the same thing as going up to file print, or you could print records that go from a certain range, like records 10 through 20. Once you hit OK, each document will be printed where the shaded data is swapped out row by row from the Excel spreadsheet. We need to recognize some special considerations when working with dates or numbers or currency. We saw in the letter that when we inserted a currency field, it didn't have any formatting. Formatting is performed in a mail merge using either merge field codes in Word or through formatting functions in Excel. Let me give you a couple examples of these and then we'll implement them. The formatting codes in Word can be revealed by selecting a field and pressing the Alt F9 key combination. This video is not meant to be an in-depth explanation of these field codes, but I will give you a few examples that you can mimic for the most common scenarios. This would be the field code that you would use if you wanted to format dates with the month name spelled out, the day, and the full year. Here would be the merge field code if you wanted to do numbers, and specifically large numbers with thousand separators, or if you wanted to format currency. I've included in the file downloads a PDF that explains these in greater detail. A technique that I like to use because my data is coming from an Excel spreadsheet is I'll actually format the data within the Excel file using Excel functions. And then the results of those functions get passed over to the mail merge. So the same three examples I just gave you with merge field codes, this is how we would do it in Excel. We would use a text function to take a cell like A1 that would hold a date and then format it according to the month, day, year format codes. Same thing if you were doing quantity, a number with a thousand separator, or if you were doing currency where you wanted a thousand separator and a currency symbol formatted to hundreds place fraction. If you wish to know more about these specific field codes, a quick Google search for Excel custom number formatting will bring up a plethora of resources where you can learn about these codes. So back in our Word document, we want to format that sales figure so that it has a currency symbol, a thousand separator, and maybe even some fractional precision. So what we'll do is we'll click in that field code area, press Alt F9, and this reveals all the field codes. So for the merge field for sales, we're going to put in those field codes that we saw in the earlier explanation. In this case, backslash pound sign, space, and then I want to start with my currency symbol. I'll put in my pound signs to establish where my thousand separator goes and then showcase how much decimal precision I want to have. If I press Alt F9, I can go back to the state I was in. Now I won't see the result of that field code modification until I press F9 by itself and refresh the page. Let's add an extra sentence to this. Just a little note that says last sale date. And then we'll go up to our merge fields and insert sale date. And as we can see, it's in a format we don't really care for. So we're going to do an Alt F9. We'll bring up the field codes. And in this case, I'm going to do a backslash at. And then in double quotes, we'll place MMMM for the full month name, D for a single day date, and then a full year. Close quotes. Alt F9 to switch back. It's still showing the old date. But when I press F9, I refresh the page. And now I can get the formatted date. Now, if you're not comfortable with the Alt F9 and then messing with these field codes because one wrong move and you could mess this up. Maybe you're more comfortable doing the formatting at the data source and then just passing that formatted information back into mail merge. So let's jump over to Excel and do the formatting over there. So back in the data source, if we look at this sales column and click in a cell, we can see that the data doesn't actually contain dollar signs and commas and fractions. This is all a result of Excel formatting. Unfortunately, when Word peeks into this file and pulls the data from this sales column, it doesn't see the formatting. It just takes it as raw data. And that's why the numbers looked ugly. Same thing for the sale date. It's just reading it in this sort of raw form. No amount of formatting here is going to allow Word to see that. So what we can do is actually change the data to physically include that information. So a trick I like to use in Excel is, I'll leave my original columns alone because maybe I need those numbers in that format for some other purpose. But then I'll go over here and I'll add some additional columns. And here I've called it mail merge sales and mail merge sale date. So I've still got my sales and my sale date in the original format, but I'm not going to use those in the mail merge. I'm going to use these instead. Now the sales look the same, but the difference is where the original sales is actually raw data being displayed in Excel with formatting codes. The mail merge sales field is a formula that looks at that sales field and then applies custom number formatting to it. Since Word can't look in the cell and read that formula, it reads the result of the formula, which is the formatted version of the original ugly sales. Same thing for the date. 
I'm using the text function to point to the date field and then apply these specific formatting codes to it. So when Word looks at this particular column, it doesn't see the formula, it sees the result of the formula. So whether you apply formatting codes in Word or directly in Excel is really just a matter of your comfort level. So now that we've created the form letter, we need envelopes to put the letter in, and those envelopes need to contain the same address information. So if I were to go up to File and start a new document, I'll go to Mailings, start a new mail merge, and this time use envelopes. Here I'll use a standard size 10 envelope, hit OK. And now here in the Recipients field, I'll go up to Select Recipients, use an existing list, and I'm going to point to that same mail merge data file that I used for the form letter. If I'm in a hurry, I can go straight for the address block, plug it in, preview my results. If you'd rather have a little more control over this, I'm gonna hit undo. And you could do something like, I wanna insert the first name, space, the last name, enter. Maybe I wanna put the region under that. And then finally the address, enter, city, comma, space, state, space, zip. So if you want to do customizations, you can insert these in one at a time. But if you're in a hurry, you could just go up to the address block and plug it in. Here you could do any formatting that's necessary, like maybe increase the font size, center, change the fonts, and then back to the mailings, finish and merge, print. And then here's where you would start feeding envelopes into the printer. Now what if your printer wasn't capable of accepting envelopes through the manual page feed? Maybe you want to print these addresses on labels and then affix the labels to the envelopes. Well, I'm going to go back up to file, start a blank document, go to mailings, and I'm going to start a mail merge, but this time for labels. We'll tell it the label that we're going to use. I'm going to use an Avery label, stock number 5160, which is very common where I am. So this gives me a grid that shows me the basic label layout configuration. In the first label slot, we're going to go up to select recipients, point to that same Excel spreadsheet, and this is gonna plug a field code into all successive label positions called next record. The first label position doesn't have that. This is where you're gonna craft your label information. Again, if I'm in a hurry, I could just go to address block, plug that in, and then I'll go to preview results. And notice I'm only seeing one label. Now at this point, what I would do is I would do a little formatting. Like for me, I like to take my labels and I'll center them. I'm going to turn off my preview. So we have an address block and then we have a next record field code. Here's the part as a beginner where you probably wouldn't know what to do next. And that is we need to go up here and hit this button that says update labels. Because what that will do, it will insert that address block into all of the other label positions. This way the first label position gets the first record from the Excel file. Then it goes to the next record and crafts another address block. And then goes to the next record and crafts another address block. We can see this by going up to preview results. So that's how we use mail merge in Microsoft Word. If you have any questions about this or run into an issue that I didn't cover in the video, please let me know in the comments, and I'll help fill in any features or behaviors that I might have missed in the video. Thank you for watching, and remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.